My absolute favorite feature that comes with Final Cut Pro 11 is the magnetic mask. So this video is a deep dive on how to get the most out of the magnetic mask. To add the magnetic mask, you have several different options. One is to simply come on over to your magic wand after you've selected your clip, then go down to add magnetic mask. You can also achieve that with control command M. Now that I've added the magnetic mask, you'll immediately notice that I have some changes happen here in my viewer. In the top left and right, you'll notice that we now have a whole bunch of extra controls. You'll also notice in our effects panel that the magnetic mask has been added as a simple effect. Taking a look at our cursor, you'll notice that it's become an eyedropper shape with the addition symbol. That addition symbol indicates that we will be adding to the mask as we create new points. To make a selection is super simple, go ahead and move your cursor over the center of your subject and click to create a new point. You'll notice that's added that green dot indicating that this is an additive point to our magnetic mask. You'll also notice that part of her arm didn't quite get caught. So to grab that selection, we'll just create another point. And just like that, we have a pretty clean mask. We now have this dotted line around our subject showcasing where the mask is taking place. Now, if you take a look at our clip, you'll notice that the keyframe I created for our mask is in the center. So by pushing analyze, it's going to both track forwards and backwards. Now that this mask is applied, we can technically use this to completely remove the background. To do so, we'll just come on up to the top right corner and push done. And you'll notice now that the background has been completely removed from our subject. You can also make fine detail adjustments with your mask by coming over to the feather. If we drag to the left, it's going to restrict the feather of the mask a little bit more. If we drag to the right, it's going to expand out the mask further. It should also be noted that if you want to take your feather beyond this 100 value, you can click directly on the number and drag up. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that parameter. And to get back into the mask editing mode, we just need to go to this person icon and click here. Now, what if we wanna cut out more than one single subject using this magnetic mask? If you take a look in the top right corner, you'll notice that we can add a new mask effect. And now if we take a look inside of our effects browser, you'll notice that we have two completely different masks. This mask is going to be green. Let's go on over and select the father of this family and click to create a new point. It looks like it's creating a pretty solid selection, but I've also noticed that we've selected some of the background here between his legs. Let's go ahead and clean up this mask by either going to the top left corner and finding the subtract selection button, or we can push option on our keyboard and you'll notice that my cursor now has a minus symbol next to it. This is the fastest way to change your brush selection. So what I can do is push option and click right here between his legs and clean up our selection quite a bit. That's looking good to me. Now all we need to do is go on up to the top left and select analyze. So just like that, we now have two very complex masks in our scene. If you wanna work on just one mask alone and you don't wanna see all of the masks at the same time, you can come on over to the top right corner and select this layers icon. So now it will only show the mask that is selected here inside of your effects browser. So if I wanna see the red version, I can click there. At the beginning of this video, I noted that there's several different ways to add the magnetic mask. So the first way is of course using the magic wand, but another really powerful and easy way to use the magnetic mask is by simply clicking and dragging your effects into your viewer. Let's say that I want to make everything in the scene except for my wife in the center black and white. To do so, let's go on over to our effects and we'll just look up the black and white effect. Now that I've found it, I'm just gonna simply click and drag this effect directly over my subject. And from there, I'll release the selection and it's already created a perfect selection around her. After that, we can simply go on up to analyze and just like that, it is completed and we can push done. But you'll notice that now just my wife is black and white while everything else has color. This is a super cool effect, but I actually want to invert the mask. Fortunately, magnetic masks work just like shape masks in Final Cut Pro. To change it, we'll come on up to the top right corner and you'll find our shape mask tools. Let's select that and then select invert masks. So now the black and white effect is only being applied around my wife and she's still staying in color. This has all sorts of applications because you could simply apply a color correction to a subject by finding your color correction wheels and then clicking and dragging that directly onto your subject. Now that I'm done tracking it, I can always go into my color wheels and I could change the inside mask, give it a little bit more contrast. Then we could go outside of the mask and maybe push it to the blue tones or something like that. 
Hopefully you can start to see the sheer power of the magnetic mask by using it in tandem with your effects. But there's a few other things you should be aware of with the magnetic mask for getting a cleaner selection. The first and most important tip I should suggest with the magnetic mask is make sure that your selections aren't too large. This magnetic mask is a version 1.0, which means there are some bugs and it has a pretty hard time working with really large selections. To show what I mean, I'll go ahead and select this shot and I'm gonna add the magnetic mask with Control Command M. You might be like me and want to select this entire city skyline, so you'd create some points, but that could take an eternity because these points can be quite small. So another really awesome way to create selection points inside of the magnetic mask is to come to the top left and get into your brush mode. When I select that, you'll notice we also have a size slider here on the right hand side. So let's make this super large and go ahead and try and select the entire city skyline. If I've selected too much, I can always push option and that will give me the inverse selection mode. So now we will subtract and I can go ahead and remove part of this mask. Then we could go back into our regular mask selection mode by clicking the add button and then select the different buildings we want. But you might start to notice that things are going awry and that is because the selection is just too large. If I try to add any more points, we really won't get anywhere with this particular shot. So like I said at the beginning, try and keep your selections a bit smaller for right now until Apple intelligence can catch up and make even better selections. Now the last thing I wanna show you with magnetic masks is if you need to clear out a large section of a mask that maybe has gone a bit crazy. Again, I'll add a mask with Control Command M and let's select our dog here. I'm gonna find a good first frame here, maybe somewhere in there and create the selection. I'm noticing I don't like the selection up here by the pants or the hand. So let's get to our brush mode and go ahead and remove those points. Another really great way to view how the mask is working is to come on over to the right side and to select view mask. From there, we can go ahead and push analyze to let it track through and it's doing a pretty good job. So this particular mask worked quite well, but if you're ever in a spot where you find that the mask just isn't quite working for you, you can at any time either come up to the top left and press this X and that will clear that specific keyframe. Or if you need to make a larger selection, you can come down to the magnetic mask editor, which you can also get by right clicking and then selecting hide or show magnetic mask editor and then click and drag just like with the object track editor, which will then allow you to delete that specific section. So now I have a mask here at the beginning and I have a mask here at the end, but nothing in between. If I wanted to get a mask back here, I could go ahead and track forward. That would create a new control point there. And just like that, I've cleaned up my mask. If you enjoyed this video and wanna learn way more about Final Cut Pro 11, maybe consider subscribing as I will consistently be bringing more and more videos. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.